Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Guy's Home Kitchen. Tonight we're making tortelli quattro formaggi, which is four cheese tortelli, which is really a fancy Italian word for saying stuffed pasta. I'm going to show you how to make that shape. We also have a very special guest in the house, first time ever. We have in-studio guests on Guy's Home Kitchen. Jimmy and Christy, say hi. Please. Hey guys, we're excited to be here. We got an awesome show packed for you tonight. You're going to learn how to make some shapes. It's going to taste great. We're going to make it a nice cream sauce. We're going to finish it with a little nutmeg. So make sure you stay, stay tuned. So let's get saucy. All right, welcome back guys, here we go. Let's get into it. We got a bunch of ingredients tonight. Uh, we're going to start with the pasta. So we're making fresh pasta from scratch tonight. I'm using zero zero flour, uh, which is Italian fine flour. If you, all you have is all purpose flour, that'll work fine too. And eggs for the pasta and that's it. Eggs and flour, really simple. For the cheese mixture, we're gonna be using ricotta, we're gonna use mozzarella, we're gonna use goat cheese and Parmigiano Reggiano. And to finish, we will make the sauce with heavy cream, butter, garlic, sage, pecorino romano, and nutmeg. Okay, we got a lot of action. I got semolino flour, semolina flour here too, which is going to be used to help the pasta from sticking to trays and stuff from out while we, um, you know, work. Otherwise, it'll stick. So let's get right into it. I'm going to start with the pasta because the pasta is going to need time to rest. So I got my mixer here. I'm going by weight. And the, basically it's 100 grams of flour to one egg. So tonight, because we have a bunch of people, I'm gonna make 400 grams of flour. Oh, change this to grams. So 400 grams of flour. Doesn't have to be exact. I'm at 405, so close enough. Okay, and then we're gonna use four eggs. Actually, let me get this in here. I got my um, stand mixer here with the dough hook on it. And this is the uh, pasta attachment. This is what's going to uh, roll the pasta out for us uh, because we're just gonna make you know squares, pretty fairly large squares. So let's get the eggs in. Okay, so 400 grams of flour, four eggs. And then we're gonna get this going. And the, the mixer is gonna do two things. One, it's gonna mix it for us. Oh, this little flour, it's okay. It's gonna mix it for us and it's gonna knead it for us. So we're gonna start slow just to get this mixed in. So if it doesn't get all incorporated, just use your hands or spatula if you have it. And then just get it in there. It's going to be a good mix. Also, just so you know, I do have a pot of boiling water on the stove um, because when we're ready to boil, it's got to be ready. Hey, Chef. Yeah. Does it matter if the eggs are out of the refrigerator or if they're room temperature? Uh, it really doesn't. Um, I've had mine out because of getting ready for the show. Um, but it really doesn't matter. When I'm, when I'm baking, I use my eggs out room temperature when I'm baking. Um, but for this, it doesn't matter. What's important is we let the gluten rest after it's done kneading. And that's what's gonna allow us to actually um, roll it out smoothly. So right now, it's almost in the form of a ball. I'm 
Okay, let me show you this. So basically, this Joe, this dough, just got mixed together, and so it's very, um, you know, stringy. And, it, and when, if you try to rip it, look, if you try to rip it, it just rips apart. So there's no gluten in here yet. So what we have to do is knead it, and we can do it by hand. It'll take a long time. So let the machine do the work. So I'm going to let it knead for about three minutes. In the meantime, get your plastic wrap ready because once this is done kneading, we're going to wrap it in plastic and let it rest for about 15, 20 minutes, uh, 30 minutes if you have it. And um, like I said before, that's so it can roll out smoothly for us and allow the gluten to develop. So right now it's struggling because it's really hard and it's eating it really well. You know, a lot of people always get excited about fresh pasta, but it's so easy because it's two ingredients. It's flour and it's eggs. Okay, so here's our pasta. And I'm just gonna get a couple of quick kneads. So if you don't have the mixer, this is basically what you would do to knead it out. And you basically, Fold it over, take your palm, push it down and out, okay? And just keep doing a quick turn and over, okay? And then, now, I'm gonna wrap it. So we're wrapping this because the pasta will dry out on you, and if it dries out on you, it's going to be really difficult to um, to roll out, It'll crack and stuff. So we're just gonna make this tight. And we got our pasta dough. We're gonna let that rest. While that rests, we are going to start making our filling. So for the filling, we are going to use we'll go with the cheese. I guess that's about a cup, cup and a half. And then we're going to put in, uh, what I like to do first is put ricotta, garlic, salt, pepper, and oil in the pan, in the mixture first, and get that tasting correct. A lot of stuff today. Okay, so there's our ricotta. Now we're gonna do the garlic. So basically you want to mince your garlic. Also, when we go back to rolled pasta, I will show you if it's not needed enough, how to fix that on the fly. Whether mine's needed enough or not, I can show you how to do that. So stay tuned. If you're just tuning in, we're making tortelli quattro formaggi, which is a four cheese tortelli so four cheese stuffed pasta. Tortelli has a, a, a very nice shape, which I'll show you before. It's got a little style to it than your typical ravioli. And then we're gonna finish it in a nice cream sauce. Garlic's gonna go in. And then we're gonna put some olive oil in here. That. And some salt. Pepper. Okay, so give this a mix. Now, this filling, just like this is, is really good too. You could use this filling if you're making um, eggplant rollatini, 
uh, lasagna. This is the mixture I use when I make my own lasagna. It's very versatile, but we're gonna we're gonna make this better, a lot better by incorporating some more cheeses. Okay, so let's clean up the board. Get that garlic in there. Okay, now we're going to add the mozzarella. So we will take our grater, box grater, on the large grate, and grate this. This is a pound of mozzarella. Probably going to use somewhere between half and all of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby. We're going to get cheesy. Hey, Chef, what's a pirate's favorite ingredient? A, a pirate's favorite, favorite ingredient? ingredient? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. know. What is it? Garlic! Oh, oh man. man. Why did I invite you guys on the show? <laughs> so, we got the wine, so. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> okay. So, I think I want like that much. That's good. You guys want some mozzarella? Yeah, for sure. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Give it to the other guys. Oh, look at that. What we got? I'm going to bring him out over here. Okay. okay. So now, let's get in the, uh, making a mess here. Tonight. Put the goat cheese in. This is, I think, four ounces. Yeah, four ounces. So we'll probably use four. Goat cheese travels well, meaning a little bit goes a long way in dishes. Oh, I love goat cheese too. And then freshly grated Parmigiano. So we're going to use a small one here. That's a block of cheese, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so put the Parmigiano in. We'll give this a good mix. So I actually left the goat cheese out uh, room temperature for a couple hours just so when we get to this stage it mixes up well. Okay, so now you're going to notice also another thing. It got a little bit drier than the ricotta because the ricotta is very wet. So if you're only going to use ricotta, then I would suggest you let it drain overnight with some cheesecloth. You guys want to taste this? Sure. Let's see. Let me make sure it's right. Okay. I want a little bit more oil. More pepper. Okay. Let me know what you guys think. Okay, okay. Let me see if I can make anything better. better. I'm excited. Let me try this here. It smells garlicky. Mm. Oh, wow. Good? Yeah. That's really good. Okay. Taste that olive oil, pepper, and that. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make it a little better. better. Oh yeah? I'm oh, going God. to add, so yes. saving the sage for the sauce, I'm going to make it. Can you turn off the volume on it, Chef? But just, yeah, turn yeah. off the volume. Make it extra saucy. Extra saucy, yeah. Turn it up. So creamy. So what I'm gonna do mm. is layer these like this. You know what? More. Even more. Awesome. More sage. So what I'm going to do is layer it like this. Yeah. Roll it up. And you make very thin slices. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Let me put it in. I'll give it another mix. Okay. There we go. So that's our cheese mixture. Ricotta, mozzarella, goat cheese, and Parmigiano Reggiano with salt, pepper, oil, and um, a little bit of sage. I'm going to take a second and move this down because I'm going to need this room for when we make the pasta. So it's important when you make the pasta, one, your machine's on. In tight. Okay. You also want to make sure the surface is dry. A wet surface will kill the pasta here. Okay. So let's get the pasta out. Normally, you want to let this go a little bit, rest a little bit longer. It's been about, I don't know, 10 minutes. So let's give it a shot. So basically I'm gonna take just a little bit. That's a good sign. Already. Okay, let's back into the ball. Okay, so now we're going to run it through the thing. So I got this set on the lowest setting, which is one, and I'm gonna pass it through each setting twice until I get it to the thinness I want. So right now we're just rolling this out. So here's what you do, if it's not really strong enough, you just fold it over on itself and pass it through again. Okay. So this is level one. Now we're on level two. We have two passes through. How are you guys feeling over there? Man, we're eating. How's that cheese? How's, how's the wine? Wine, the Chianti is great. You say something to the chef. So now we're gonna go on three. This goes up to eight. Um, if memory recalls, last time I made this, I think I went up to six. Um, I like, I personally, it's really preference, so you could go as thin as you want. I like mine really thin, but the thinner it gets, the more delicate it is. So now I'm going four. Every setting you go gets longer and longer. It's getting thinner and thinner. You basically want to go until you can start to see through it. So right now I can't see my hands. Jeez. Having some challenges here tonight with this thing. That's right, let's put it back in. Of course, when you cook on a live show, this stuff <laughs> happens. The beauty of live. Yeah. Live TV. Okay, so what's cool is you get to learn the mistakes too. And so we're still on four. I'm going to do four more times just because I don't remember where we're at.
Okay, so now I'm going to five. So look how much longer this is getting ready. I'm just starting to see my hand, not, not so much. So I think I'm gonna go with six again tonight. It'd be nice and delicate. Okay, that's number six right there. If you guys are watching out in the audience, let me know where you guys are from. Or if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Also, if you don't mind, go ahead and share this to as many friends and groups as you're in so people can tune in on the action here. Okay, so this is number six. I'm going to stop here. So you can see, let me show you this. This is how big this got from that one little piece I ripped off, okay? So that's why 400 grams of flour goes a long way, all right? So what we got to do is throw some semolina down here so it doesn't stick. Let's dump some here. So just, um, just, it's a sound semolina makes. Okay, so. What we're going to do, shoot this out. take our pizza cutter, and there's uh, we're going to make it a couple of different sizes just so you guys can see. Uh, first, I'm going to square it up, so I'm going to take the end and take off that piece and that piece, which we could reuse. So now it's square. I'm going to do one large one just so you guys can see how big you could go. Um, and then I'm going to do, well, let's do a couple of large ones. The bigger, the better, right? The rest, I'm just going to cut right down the middle, like this, and then you want squares, so, you know, this is that big, so you want to go that much over like that, okay? doesn't have to be perfect, but get pretty close to square. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is actually dust. So after I'm done making them, I'm going to drop them on this pan as we hold them until we're ready to drop it in the water there, okay? So the way you do this, I'm stepping on cheese over here, just take the filling, and you go right in the middle, okay? These large ones are probably gonna take a tablespoon like that, okay? If you put too much, what could happen is let me get the ball out of the way so you guys can see. If you do too much, what happens is when you go to shape it, the cheese mixture in the middle will kind of come out the sides. If it starts coming out the sides, it's not sealed. When you boil it, it's going to start coming out and go all over the water. Okay? So for the, the little ones, I'm going to do like a tea, teaspoon's worth. Okay? What I did is I just got a second spoon so that I can just take what I want, get it on there better. Okay, right in the middle. So serving size of pasta is typically 100 grams per person, but since we, and we have eight people here tonight, so ultimately that's what we're cooking for. The reason I only did 400 is because we're stuffing it. So if we were just making tagliatella or fettuccine or something simple like that, um, I would have made closer to 800 grams of pasta with eight eggs. Okay. So 
So we get this on here. So what's your guys' favorite Italian dish? You like gnocchi? Yeah. <clears throat> eggplant parmesan. Oh yeah? Yes. When the eggplant is nice and lean and thin. <laughs> yeah. Fried up. Super thin. Mm-hmm. No uh, skin. No skin. No skin. Super thin. <laughs> That's how it's supposed to be. Lots of luxurious layers. We gotta put that on the list, Chef. Well, I actually have gnocchi coming up here in four weeks or so. But eggplant parmesan, I think someone actually requested that on the Guy's Home Kitchen. No, it was actually the um, People Who Cook Facebook page. Oh, yeah. So there's a Facebook page called People Who Cook, where they go and help learn from other home cooks and share recipes and ideas. So I posted on there, said, hey, what do, you, what do you guys want in your next show or something like that? And that's what they said. At least that was one of them. Okay, so here's how we do this. For the large one, you fold it over like this, okay? And then you seal it. Like this. Now if your pasta's dried out too much, which mine might have, because I'm doing a lot at once, uh, you could get some water. Yep, I need some water. And you just run your fingers around the edges. Okay, so let's do this over. Order. Seal that. I don't know if I've ever made them this big before, okay? So here's how you do this. You take your finger underneath, and then you just bend it over like this, okay? And then you pinch the bottom to close it up. And then that's your tortelli. Now that's a super big one, which is kind of cool. Okay, so let's do it again. Get the water. So this is actually kind of time intensive, especially if you're going to make a whole bunch. Maybe the reason why people don't do it a lot, but it's so worth it. When we get to the end and you actually taste it. So you bend it over like this, pinch it at the ends, and there's your tortelli. If you notice, it kind of looks like a really big tortellini, which is what it is. Okay. So then here's the little ones. Ready? A little water. And then you go corner to corner. The ones are nice, and then you just go like that. Look at that. Okay. You have a question. Okay, what's the question? Kelly wants to know how to make two big ones and then the rest of the small ones. She didn't know if she missed something. Yeah, I just was. I just did those to show how you could go different sizes. You could go as big or small as you want. Really small is tortellini. Um, so like. A little bit smaller than this would be tortellini. And those are large. Okay. So tortellini would be about half the size of this. Whoa. That would just wrap right around your pinky. You guys want to give this a shot? Yeah. Of the hands here. It's very courteous of you. And there you go, just like that. Okay. So All here, right. so grab so, one. It's a good one. Okay. Put it down. Take you just dump your finger in water and go around. Yep. Around the edge. That's it. That's good. Okay. Now fold it over corner to corner. And then press down, yep. Okay. Okay. Now, hold 
triangle tip up. Yep. Now hold the edges here right by the cheese. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then you just want to bend. Yep. It's like a bend and snap almost. And then pinch. <laughs> Perfect, man. Bend and snap. Look at that. It's like you've done this before. No, I've never done this before. <laughs> All right, well, here. I made some pasta, You're but not, chef not, tonight. Uh, not, so, not these. We got some people watching. Okay. And they're getting impatient and hungry. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm one of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bend and pinch. Oh, look at that. Nice. Perfect. Done. All right, I'm going to rock and roll on these bad boys. This. I've eaten so much cheese over there, sitting around watching. I gotta work it off. <laughs> and then I'm gonna eat these and I cannot wait to eat this filling because it was so good. <laughs> Garlicky and cheesy. And look at that, oh yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna mark the ones I like the best, the ones that have the most filling so I can remember them for later. Yeah. <laughs> So when we go to cook these, we're gonna drop them in the water right just before the sauce is done because these are done when they basically float and it's not gonna take more than a two or three minutes, if that. Is that bigger than a tortoise? Yeah, that's bigger than a tortoise. There you go. All right. Some of these I cut a little small, but that's the beautiful thing about this is you really can't make a mistake. I guess if you pinch them closed and, and they... And if you do, every mistake is... It's art. Is recoverable. Look at that. Look at that. Oh yeah, that's a pocket of goodness right there. <laughs> They're pretty durable. I've been slinging them over there yeah. onto the pan. They don't, they that's didn't the open up. That's the gluten. So that's why we, um, that's why we needed to knead it to develop the gluten. The gluten are the proteins that bind together and create that elasticity. So that's what creates the strength. And the same thing in pizza, you know, it's the glutens that allow you to stretch the dough and it not break. Oh, well, I ought to be like super strong, a superhero, because I have so much gluten in me that uh, <laughs> I ought to be like impervious. <laughs> <laughs> Some people are gluten free. I'm just gluten full. I I love this pasta. I love pasta. All right. Some of these Look at are that. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. It's pretty good, man. I, I learned from well, the best. I have to hire you on the I show. Learn from the master. The master. All right. So what? A, this one's gonna be really stuffed. So I'm gonna let you finish how these. Do I, how do I how do I handle that? I just just kind of push it in. If you get if some cheese squirts out, just take some cheese out. Okay. Okay. If okay. I have to eat it, I will. I mean, I'll take one for the team. Okay. Here. You finish. Okay. And I'm gonna get started on the sauce. Okay. So for the sauce, I need butter, which I put over here. So we're gonna start by getting the butter in. We're gonna melt the butter, add a little bit of garlic, add the cream, add some cheese, finish it with a little nutmeg and salt and pepper. Okay? Oh, and the sage. Oh. <laughs> totally forgot about the sage. Okay. So let's get the butter in. And we'll get some garlic in. Garlic I like to do whole. If you want to crush it a little bit, you can. The whole's fine, I just want some flavor in there. And we're gonna get this all nice and healthy. So a very traditional way to eat this in Italy is actually just butter and sage. Uh, they brown the butter a little bit, add a little sage, kind of like what I did on the steak show. Um, and they just toss it and then finish it with some freshly ground Parmigiano on top. It's very traditional. But tonight we're going to make a cream sauce. Okay. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jeff. Had a good time. It was fun. All right. 
So now <laughs> we're getting saucy now. So I'm not going to add the sage here because I don't want the sage to get too crispy and I also don't want the butter to brown. So right now I'm going to get the cream in. And we will do about that much based on what we did here. This should be plenty. plenty. Okay. And then we add the sage. Stir. All right, let's hear it. Comments and questions. Let's let's go. Well, when I'm making sauces like this, I usually leave a hole. You can crush it too, but if you crush it, keep it whole, you know, whole, as whole as you can, because I'm not actually gonna serve it. I'm gonna pick it out, because I just want to infuse the garlic flavor in it. If, if garlic is something that's going to be in it, kind of like the mixture, I will dice it fine. If I'm making like a red sauce, I will slice it thin, so I get as much surface area as I can and keep it in the sauce, and it'll just melt down and kind of become super soft and pretty much just kind of merge into its to the sauce there. So I'm getting the cream hot. Do we have other questions or is that it? That was a direct question to the cooking. Uh, but right. Nick and Nicole Pila will be coming over shortly. Okay. <laughs> okay, so for the pasta. You kind of took the genie out of the bottle here, man, and I have a live audience. I know. <laughs> So I'm adding some salt to the pasta water here, and then we are going to drop the pasta in. And as soon as that, as soon as these float, they're done. These are our big ones we did. I'm gonna erase my identifying marks yet. Okay. Give it a little quick turn so it doesn't stick. Heat back up. Now, while this cream gets to this point, it starts to simmer. We're gonna add our cheese. So get the pecorino and the grater. This is pecorino romano, pecorino romano. I guess if I'm gonna be correct. Going in. And if you notice, it ain't any salt yet because this cheese is extra, is really salty. It's a very salty cheese. And that's good. I don't want to add salt until I get the cheese in. Okay, so these are just starting to float. So I want to take them out. I'm going to add it in here. Just like this. It's okay if a little pasta water goes in, that's totally fine. It's gonna help thicken it out and cook it. Okay. It smells, it smells amazing, Chef. <clears throat> Thank you. So, now we're just gonna let this come together for about 30 seconds, probably. And what's happening right now is the pasta is finishing cooking. And, you know, th this is something you don't really need to cook to al dente. This is fine, and the sauce is thickening. And we are going to, at this point, taste it real fast. It's really thickening now. Okay. There's a hair, touch more salt. And the pepper. We're getting saucy now, Jeff. We're getting saucy now. Yeah. It looks like it. And now we need the nutmeg. So I'm going to take the flame off. 
Okay, this is, look at this. That's, that's some. Okay. Take our nutmeg. Nutmeg goes a long way, guys. So you only really need to use a little bit. And it works really well with cream. Okay. So give this a quick stir. And this is done. So now we gotta plate it up. Let me go get the plates. Plates, oh yeah. It's All right. Bow show. Oh, I mean, you guys wanna eat though, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll hold that my hands if I have to. So. Okay, now we are going to finish this with some balsamic. Mm. So balsamic is nice, balsamic is very acidity, acidity, it's got a lot of acid in it, I can't talk. And why I like it is that acidity helps kind of cut through a very heavy dish like this. So a little bit of a balsamic bead. So that's balsamic, balsamic, these are balsamic, vinegar, balsamic vinegar. These are balsamic beads. So very, these are basically like, it's almost like um, like salmon roe or caviar or something. But instead of the fish egg inside, it's just a pop of balsamic. Ah. Yeah. So now, take a little spoon. Take just the, that. Look at that. Okay. Voila. Beautiful and delicious. Time to eat. I hope. I okay. Think. I think I go on this camera for a second. So I got a YouTube channel now. It's called Guys Home Kitchen of all things. And thumbnail is a big part of it. So what I'm doing right now is going to thumbnail. That's a great thumbnail. Okay, there you go. And there you go. You go ahead. All right, I'm excited. Yeah, oh my God, I can smell the sage and the cream, the cheese. It's all there. I'm gonna get a little of this balsamic on there. Do you have a question? Sure. Where do you get that balsamic beads? I got this online. Um, it was called something something Italy. <laughs> I could post a link um, in the description after the show or in the comments. This is incredible. Um, it's delicious. So do you, see, do you taste the sage come through? Oh, absolutely. The sage comes right through. How is it with the, the balsamic there. as a I'm, I've balance. been dipping it in the balsamic like swipe that you put there. And it's wonderful. The garlic and the cheese, it just comes out along with pepper and the sage, and really the sage is beautiful on the nose. Mm. Nice. It's really nice. It's well balanced and delicious. How's the pasta? Is it, is it oh, delicate or is it? Yeah, it's delicate good. and it's not overdone. It's mm -hmm. a night, It's like just under chewy, so like it's a good al dente, nice. I guess. Yeah. And it, it's really perfectly done. If you got this in a, uh, you know, in a high end restaurant, you'd be ecstatic. Be happy. Yeah. All totally right. ecstatic. Awesome. Thank you guys. Okay, so this wouldn't be a Guys Home Kitchen live TV show without the official taste tester, and we have a guest official taste tester tonight as well. So why don't both of you go ahead and give it a shot. Pick one. Anyone. Camera's right here. All right, let everybody know what really it tastes taste like. I really taste that balsamic. Taste, yeah? And the sage. Yeah? How's the cream? The cream's very creamy. Very creamy? The cream is creamy, all right. It's really good. Yeah? Would you eat that over and over again? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Hey, we're eight years old. Eight, right? 
That's, that's, that's a good, that's a good <laughs> response, <laughs> as big, best as it gets. <laughs> You're going to look back at this video in 20 years and say, man, I should have said something a lot better than that. <laughs> anyway, that's our show tonight. Probably I should have ate more of that. <laughs> yeah, I should have ate more, yeah. Thank you for watching. What? Huh? Talk about your intro. My intro? Yeah. About it. Oh. oh. So tonight's music, uh, we had some pre-hole music and our intro music. Uh, what you're about to hear as soon as we end here was brought to you by a good friend of mine. We grew up. He was actually in my bridal party. He's, uh, he's done, you know, gigs with uh, Volva, whatever that was. Next week, we got double pork chops, Ooh. With a caramelized onion, and aftercraft puree.